Right. Other than that, man, if, if, you know what I mean? Unless you do, in, in, in the real talk, if a fighter retires and he has a lot of money, his managers and they might keep in touch with him. Because there might be something they might need from him. But if he's down on his luck, believe me, they ain't taking his phone calls. They ain't got, I mean, they, all these managers, they said, a lot of, not going to say, oh, a lot of them say, oh, I love the kid, I love this. Let it be a time where they know they can't make the money if they kid them and watch what happens. Right. They try, that father tries calling and say, oh, I, I'll call you right back. They ain't calling you back. They said, they're not calling you back. But if there's something they feel they can get out of the deal, then they're going to, then, then they'll call you back. Or they'll take your call. And, and, I, and I, I've been down that road. You know what I'm saying? And if you, and if you're a fighter and you worked hard and you bust your ass off, you know what I mean? You, I mean, your whole career, and then when it's all over and you got nothing to show for it, and then the people you thought loved you, when you, you turn to them, they got nothing to say, I got nowhere to help you. See, that, that, I mean, that's a hard pill to swallow. I know um, re- recently um, HBO, they did the special about the football players. And, like, uh, you know, they had uh, Campbell on there basically uh, about how a lot, a lot, like, after the, you know, after the sport is over, they don't really have the right resources and things to take care of them. Do you think, in the, as a whole, some of the uh, more, you know, the people with some wisdom, are they trying to put something together to try to protect these fires that have some type of pension or some type of something to help them out? Most sad stories. Boxing has more sad stories. Right. Yeah, well, been fortunate that he made money. Even though his knees are bad, his back is bad, you know, his health is bad, but he still, you know, he doesn't have to spend for money. Right. I mean, I see fighters not coming back in their fifties, man. You know, because that's all they know. Right. I mean, it's no one's fault but the fighters' for if they blow their money. I mean, you can't blame nobody but the fighter. But the bottom line is, you got in, you put your nuts and guts on the line. They was making money off you, and then when you need that help, it ain't that. So if I see a, fi- a manager that helps a fighter after his career is over and the fighter you know, didn't make too much money, I got nothing below for that manager. I mean, but you get some managers that have a lot of fighters. You ask, yeah, what's that? Say you spoke to your fighter. Oh, maybe about a month or two ago. That means a year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's crazy, yeah. man. But, you know, I mean, fighters got it rough, man. And people don't understand what fighters go through, man. I mean, they, you know, they see a fighter, okay, a fighter makes a million dollars. Right. Say a fighter gets a million dollar payday. Now the fighters don't give the trainer ten percent, which is understandable. But just say if they gave him, just say if they gave a trainer seven percent. Right. Seven percent of a million dollars. The manager gets a third. Then you get training expenses. Then you got Uncle Sam. What does the fighter have left? Yeah, the fans need to hear that. A lot of times when the fans, you know, they get upset when fighters turn down fights, and then they hear you break down the economics of the game. You know, the fans need to understand that. That's why a lot of time fighters hold out and, you know, they don't take certain deals because of what you just elaborated on. So that's that's a very, you know, well-spoken point right there. Because, I mean, you know, they, I mean, you know, as a trainer, people tell me as a trainer, I should be saying, oh, man, you should, you should be going for the 10%. But, you know, if a fighter's fighting for $4 million, and they give a trainer, that's 400000 You're giving a man for training you for six or seven weeks. And then you give them ten percent. Then you give them the, the managers a third. That's forty-two percent gone. Right. Four million dollars. Yeah. And then after that, you still got like the same you got to deal with. Yeah. And what about what about uh, the other people part of the training camp? Does that come out of fighters' purse as well? Yes, sir, buddy. When they got those entourages, <laughs> how much it costs? <laughs> I mean, they got fifteen, twenty guys running around hooping, hollering. You go back and check out the hotel. You got the hotel. You got the hotel bill. It's, it, it all gets charged. Hey, it all gets charged to the fighter. That's crazy. But we ain't gonna hold you up too much longer, but we just got a couple more questions. Um, one, one, one thing I did want to ask you about is, you know, it's like an old cliche in boxing. When the fighter loses, the training gets, you know, he gets blamed. But when the fighter wins, he gets no credit at all. And this just brings me back to a fight you just had with Paulie Maginali when he fought in Gujo. And um, you gave him the proper instructions. You told him to go opposite direction of the power hand in Gujo. You know, Paulie didn't follow, follow those instructions. My question to you, buddy, is... Does it frustrate you as a, as a trainer when the fighter's not following instructions, but or do you, you know, it is no big deal at all to you? 
Oh, it frustrates the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're keeping it funky. <laughs> <laughs> we bring that up because it's funny. Yeah, we a friend to the show, Eddie Chambers. You know, we watched the fight. You was giving him all the right instructions, and he just wasn't responding. Still working with Eddie, buddy? Well, he said to me that he's coming back. He okay. said to me that, you know, sometimes it takes a loss for a guy to really understand I mean, what's really going on. I mean, right, no, no doubt. Uh, he's, he's still young. He's got the talent. I mean, there's no evidence about his body. I mean, I mean, he's got the talent to be a heavy champion of the world. You know what I mean? Like I told him afterwards, I said, look, man, I'm not going to sit here and hawk you and harass you. All I'm going to say is from experience, and that is, a loss be one of the Sleep, you had anything going? Well, I mean, we talked. I'm sure that was like kind of a low point. So, uh, what's what's your most uh, satisfying? Which, as a trainer, what was your most satisfying experience? Out there in Sunnyside. How you like it out out there in Sunnyside, Florida, man? It's 
Baby, five degrees right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you, you know, you from New York, you know, you East Coast boy, and you made the trip. When I left New York, I had a fur coat. I haven't, uh, seen, my fur coat in, I haven't seen my fur coat in eight years. Speaking of New York, sidebar question for you: what, What's up with the hip hop up there, man? They gonna bring it back, or or, was, or the South got it on smash I mean, you for know, them? You know, you know how we from New York, but we lay low for a minute. Shit <laughs> happened. <laughs> 